Hello, welcome everyone. So happy to see you here today. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Patty Bennett, and I am a craft blogger at pattystamps.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I've been a demonstrator for over 27 years, and I think in addition to the actual stamping, I love to organize all of my craft supplies. I just think it's tons of fun to have things all just perfectly organized. So today we are going to go over some organization tips that I have just implemented just within the last month or so. If you're watching a replay on my blog or on YouTube, please feel free to skip ahead just a few minutes because I'm logging on a moment early just to get all the technology going and to say hello to those of you who are joining live. So give me just a minute. I'm just going to pull up our live stream here. Hopefully, did I go live in the right place? Let me see. Yes, that's always encouraging. Because this morning I actually posted this reminder on my personal page. I, uh, you know, technology sometimes. Anyway, so a big hearty welcome to everyone who's joining in live. As you join in, if you could say hello so that I can see your name go by, that is always really fun. And I see there's already 53 of you on here, so I'm not going to mention everyone, but I will just catch a few here. Pauline and Kathy, Susan, Nancy, Linda. Diana, how are you all today? Hi, Lisa, Lynn. Hi, Tammy. So glad that you're all here. Thank you so much. Oh, good. Tracy says, yay, I get to see you live. Well, thank you for joining. That's so awesome. I appreciate that. I am just going to wait about 30 more seconds. So again, if you're watching a replay, feel free to skip ahead just a minute or so. And we'll just let everyone join in on the live. So I do a live video on Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So, you you know, probably different for you if you're in a different time zone. And usually we're crafting. And usually you're looking down right here at my crafting desk and we're making a project. And I did have good intentions. I got almost everything ready for the intended project this week. But ran out of time yesterday. Yesterday was a, a little different than I had planned, <laughs> but it's all good because, you know, it's funny how things work out, right? I had wanted to share this idea with you for about three weeks now, and there were other things that I shared with you stamp-wise, crafting-wise instead. And then all of a sudden, Yesterday, like I said, was not did not go as planned, and so I thought, well, I know what I'm going to do. Since my project isn't 100% ready, I'm going to show you this idea because I think it's really going to help you. Um, I just saw somebody ask about my chair. So this chair is from the container store. I have had it for, well, I don't know five or seven years. I honestly, I don't know. I can't remember exactly. And it's like, like stretchy bungee cord things. And it is super duper comfortable. And I just want to say the really good part of it is, even though I've had it for years, these elastic bands have not like sagged or given way or anything the whole time. So it very worth the investment. I think not positive. I think it was like in the $150 range or so when I got it. And I don't even know if they still have it. But if if you go on the containerstore.com and you look on their site at, under chairs, they may very well have it. Um, you can get it with or without uh, armrests. And there are different models. You can see this one has these little stretchy bands are like an inch or so wide. They also have it with, you know, like a real round bungee cord. I didn't care for that one as well. I liked this model, uh, but you know, we, try it out and see if you like it, if you have one close enough to go try. But I love this chair. And of course it came in bunches of colors and I just chose this color. So 
there we go. So anyway, so let's officially start. Thank you everyone for joining in live. This is Patty Bennett. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I have been a demonstrator for over 27 years. I love to craft and create and share with you Stampin' Up! projects. Today, we are going to be talking about a, a new system that I just implemented in the last month or so to store some of my products. And here's what I'm hoping is that it will really help solve this issue for you if you had the same issue I had. Here was my issue. I would get new Stampin' Up! products and specifically today we are talking about card bases or boxes that come flat, things things that come flat, like the note cards, the um, memories and more note cards, the memories and more cards, things like that. So paper goods that arrive flat, okay? Here's what would happen. I would be like, oh my gosh, uh, this is great. And I would put it on my desk and then I would be looking for it later and I couldn't find it and I would order another one. And then I would put it somewhere else. I'd put it in a drawer or in a box or I would say, oh, well, I'm gonna use this for a future event or a future blog project and I'd put it over here. And then I'd forget where it was and then I'd order another one. and. I would get fed up with myself and all of a sudden I would have like three opened packages of a certain thing. And I thought, this is a waste of money, it's a waste of time, it's frustrating, it's silly, I shouldn't be doing this, I need a better system. And so I started storing things in, so let me grab this one. This particular box is, a. Uh, I know it's backwards, but it's interdesign and oh, well, that's so weird. Looking at it backwards, I thought it said Patty Bennett. It says pantry bins. I was like, how did my name get on there? <laughs> anyway, so this was like a six by six box and I had several of these and you can see how I've made some dividers and I've labeled them. So this was basically my six by six paper storage, but I also was storing uh, like note cards and envelopes and boxes that come flat. I was storing those in here, but those things stick up higher and then I couldn't see the dividers and I, they were getting lost. And like I said, all of a sudden I would be ordering another one and ordering another one and I'd had three open packages. I'm like, okay, this is not working for me. So here's what I found. So normally I have this little stack of these over here and they're behind me over here. I, if you've watched my recent crafting organization craft room videos, you know I'm one of those gals that needs it out. I need to see it. I need to be able to grab it. And God bless all you amazing people who have everything put away and you have everything in a drawer or a cabinet and it's beautiful and it's clean. I love that look, but... I'm one of those who loves all my stuff out. So I need ways to organize and keep them handy and keep them labeled. Hi, Kathleen, welcome, your first time. So glad you're here, thank you. Oh, and I should say, if you're watching a replay and you have a question or a comment, if you could use hashtag replay and then post your comment, I go back through our comments later, like a day or two or three later. So anyway, but I will try I'm going to try to keep an eye on your comments here. If you have questions, though, um, um, I will ask for questions towards the end so that I can sort of keep my train of thought here, and then we'll go back through some of the questions. Hi, Tandra. Hi, Nell. Hi, everybody. So let me show you this a solution, and it's funny because this came about almost by accident. So if you watched my video... Gosh, I should have looked it up. Was it like three or four weeks ago where I showed you, here I can turn this and show you like real briefly. So right here in front of me is where I have all of my white Stampin' storage units that hold, so I have some stamp sets, ink pads, um, markers there in front of me. And I had replaced my wooden one. So back here you can see those paper 
storage units are just the wood color. I had splurged and I treated myself and I replaced three of my units here with the white ones and I loved them. So while I was placing that order, what caught my eye on the Stampin' Storage site, and Stampin' Storage, you may recognize their logo. This is not Stampin' Up, this is a separate company. So Stampin' Storage. What I noticed on their site when I was ordering these was this particular crate. They call it a crate and it's wide. So it's wider than six inches. So for instance, um, if you had like your six inch, you can see that this is wider than storing your dies or things that are six inches wide. Well, this caught my eye and I thought, I'm gonna use this for something. I don't know exactly what yet, but I wanna try this out. So I ordered that and in addition, at the same time, I ordered these wide magnet sheets because Stampin' Up! has some dies that are too like tall. I'll show you, for instance, it's right here. See how this one is sticking up? And so I thought, okay, I can redo that and put it on this bigger magnet card. Okay, So I thought, all right, I'm going to get this wide crate. I'm going to get the wide magnet cards. And what I also thought I ordered was these particular wide uh, plastic envelopes. So let me just open this and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so here, it's a plastic envelope with a tab. You can slip your magnet card or you could slip anything in here. Maybe you want card bases. Maybe you have a project you're working on. But those fit right in here in this wide crate. Okay, so I thought I'm going to get this system and I didn't exactly have a, a you know, 100% plan, but I thought I'll get this and I'll have it and I'll find something that I want to store in here. Well, what came... <laughs> In my box with all this white stuff was the white crate, the, the large size magnet cards, but then this packet, here, let me show you, this package came. Now you can see that these are the vertical orientation. And the opening was at the top and the tab was at the top. And I was like, well, wait, did I order the wrong thing? So I looked at my order and I had indeed ordered the horizontal ones to fit in here. And so, you know, I contacted Stampin' Storage and they immediately apologized. They're like, oh, so sorry, we sent the wrong one. Uh, we'll send you the vertical ones. I mean, sorry, we'll send you the horizontal ones. Like they accidentally sent the, the vertical. And I said, well, I'll, I'll send these back. And they said, no, no, it's all right. You know, you'll find something to do with them. And I was like, okay, well... I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but okay. All right. So, okay. So, so we have this system now because they sent the right ones. What I also bought in that same order was this large size plastic crate. Love this size. This is much bigger than those six by six ones that I just showed you that I store over there with some of my six by six paper and other product. And all of a sudden, the light bulb goes on and I'm like, well, thank goodness they accidentally sent these vertical ones because now I know how I'm going to store all of these various card bases and whatnot that are tall, that are taller than the six by six pouches. So let me show you these and I'll show you what I did. And this has been working so well for me because, well, I'll just hold up a couple of them just to show you. So you can see that I've labeled with my label maker and I'll talk about that in just a second if you're interested in the label maker. But look, when you fill up these tall, what do they call them officially? Storage pockets with a card base, it doesn't stick out the top. 
It does not cover up the tab and it does not cover up whatever you labeled it with. So I have in here the In Color T Boutique. I think you can see that, right? The T Boutique cards and envelopes. I have the Santa Express Memories and More card bases and envelopes in red and in green. I have the Memories and More cards in a pouch. These are the chic, the cards and envelopes from the, what is it, chic, texture chic. Okay. I have the craft colored note cards and envelopes. I have the large and small white Memories and More cards and envelopes. And I have my slimline envelopes. And all of these were getting just all mixed up and lost in my six by six system because they were sticking up too tall. I couldn't see the dividers. And now all of a sudden, not only do I have it labeled and it acts like a divider, but it's holding everything. It's not just a divider, right? It's a pocket. So then I went a step further, which you can see that particularly here, the T Boutique in color note cards and envelopes, they come in an assortment pack. So you get, I, I think it's either, I think it's four of the Tahitian Tide, four of the Sweet Sorbets, four of the Orchid, four of the Starry Sky, and four of the Parakeet Party. So going back to what I was telling you in the beginning, what was happening was I would need, let's say I would need 20 green ones or something for a particular project, a thank you card, a team event, whatever. So I would order multiple packs and I would have these ha packs all open. Every pack is open because I had to take all the green ones out, right? And then I would forget and I would order another pack and then I just had like so many packages open and it was making me crazy. So this way, when I have all of one color in one storage pocket, I can look immediately. Like I can look right there and I can say, oh, I have enough for you know, whatever particular project or kit or thank you card or whatever. Or I can look in here and I can just like glance down like I'm looking at the top and I say, oh, I have a lot of the sweet sorbet. I need to make a project and use this up. Or I can look down here and say, oh, the orchid, I hardly have any. So don't because you need to use it before. You oh, it, it said we lost connection for a second. I hope we're back. Can somebody let me know let me know if we're all okay? I hope we're okay. And then same thing with the Santa Express cards and envelopes. I divided those into the red ones and the green ones so that again I can just look at this and say, "Oh, okay, look, I have a lot of the red ones. Let's make a project with those." Okay, thank you everybody. I don't know, on my end it said that we had lost connection, so uh, you know, internet. <laughs> But anyway, I just love this system. I love this big crate. It's on the Stampin' Storage site. And if you are interested in this crate, the white crate that I showed you, the, the magnet cards, the pockets, I linked all of them on my blog today, pattystamps.com, P-A-T-T-Y, stamps.com. It's also linked at the top of this Facebook Live. So I wanted to make it easy for you to, to find those. So I linked directly to them. Just be aware if you use those links, sometimes, uh, well, not sometimes, sorry, I don't know why I said that. When you use those links, it will give you the option for the portrait and the horizontal. So just make sure you use the drop down menu and you select the one that you want. Because um, if I think the default, well, obviously the default is like one of them. And if you don't change it, you may not get the one you want. But anyway, these are the 9.5 by 7 storage pockets in the vertical. So this is what I've been showing you in this box. And then this particular box, oh, I have it on my, my blog today. I don't remember this exact size. Well, let me measure it. Please hold, let me measure. So it is 11 
by five and a half by mm, about seven and three quarters ish. So very generous size. And I think I'll be getting a couple more of these because I like this better than just the six by six. It obviously, you know, holds several more packets. But that's what I had for you. Oh, how many pockets in a package? It has three sets of four. So that must be, oh, 12, 12. And the, let me push this back down. Can you see? I think you can see. There we go. The tabs are staggered. And I love that so that, you know, it's kind of like looking in a filing cabinet drawer where the, the does anybody else keep as many files in a filing cabinet drawer <laughs> as I do? Anyway, it's like a filing cabinet drawer. Oh, and I wanted to show you my label maker too. So don't go yet. And then I had a card I wanted to show you. So don't, don't quite go yet, but I'm going to pause for just a second and see if you had any questions uh, Lynn says, wow, I need this. Yeah, I know. It's uh, uh, For me, it works terrific. Let's see. Any questions? I'm just scrolling back here. Yeah, Libby, I love this too. Yep, Susan, Stampin' Storage is amazing. Their products are amazing. Thank you, Tammy. She put the link on here. Thank you so much. Yep, excellent company. I totally agree, everybody. <laughs> Oh, good, Joanne. Oh, Carolyn does. Okay, all righty. Thanks, Tammy. Yeah, I the links are on my blog today. Thank you for putting it on here. I appreciate that. Yes, they fit the six by six. So let's let's look at how that looks. So, for instance, here's the metallic and shimmer six by six paper. So if you wanted to put that in here it would look like that. So you would just have, you know, a little space up here. Totally fine. You could totally do that. Uh, the issue, like I was saying though, for me was anything that's taller than six by six was getting obliterated. So if you put, let's say you had, you know, these cards and you put those in here, then you can no longer see your tab. And that was my problem with the six by six storage mixed with the taller items and it just wasn't working for me. So, hi Linda, we're just wrapping up. So uh, feel free to watch the replay. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm glad that's going to be helpful. Oh, how do I store my scrap pieces of cardstock? Okay, Anne. So, do you want to hear that story? <laughs> oh, what do you use for the white dividers for your six by six storage? These are on the Stampin' Storage site. Now, I did not link to that today because um, I think they are. I'm going to have to check for sure. They're plastic and they're labeled with my label maker. Now I'm doubting myself. I don't know for sure if these are on the Stampin' Storage site or if I found these somewhere else. But I'll tell you what I did use before I found Stampin' Storage. I bought at Staples um, plastic file folders. They make those. And I cut them up and I made dividers. Of course, they were like all different colors and nothing matched and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I mean, you you know, you could get creative. You could do it with heavy cardstock or um, lightweight cardboard as well. Uh, let's see. Yes, Stampin' Storage does have a retail store. Yeah, they do. And I wish I lived you know, back there, but, but I don't. So there we go. Um, let's see. Sorry. I thought there was another question. Uh, Nell, she's asking about my, the stamp and storage unit I showed. I have another station over there that I showed the big unit that has the ink pads and the markers and the refills all together. Um, that unit you buy in different sizes so it doesn't come apart but you can buy it in different sizes and I think I think I bought the biggest one not not hundred percent um yeah I'm getting back to the sorry I'm getting back to the scraps we just I got a little distracted with these other questions and okay so scraps let me talk to you about scraps for a minute 
and scraps, you know, I feel like all of this stuff is really personal and it's what works for you, right? Scraps got out of control for me. So for years, I had like three or four shoebox size bins full of Stampin' Up! scraps. And I'll be honest, they gave me stress. <laughs> I don't like them all like unorganized. And you know how scraps are. They're scraps. Like they're a whole bunch of different pieces and sizes and some are square and some are rectangle and some are tall and some are short and some are strips and right. Okay. It just gave me stress. <laughs> and I did my best to always use them up. Okay. I, I used up scraps as much as I possibly could. And one day I just got to the point where I was like, I can't handle this anymore. I packaged up all my scraps and I took them to the local preschool. It's actually where our son went when he was little, you know, he's in his thirties now, but when he was little, he went to this preschool at our church and I, you know, I knew, I still knew the director and everybody there. And I just said, would you like these? Could the cute kids use these? Could you, can you make anything out of these? Do you want these? And they're like, yes. I said, bless you. Gave them all my scraps. Okay. So I had zero scraps from at that time. So now what I keep, I'll even show you this right here, right here. This is the sum total of my amount of scraps right now. That's it. That's all I've got. So when I'm making a project, I do my best to, you know, use everything to its fullest, like, you know, measure out and not waste paper. Use them up as best as I can. If I think any leftover pieces are going to be helpful in a future project, it goes right here in this little slot. And like I said, that's all I have. It's That's it. If I look at it and I say to myself, you know, in all honesty, I am not going to use this little piece. I put it in the recycle bin. And it gives me so much less stress. <laughs> and I... Uh, and could somebody please answer, Anne, I can't do live closed captioning. The replay will have the closed captioning. Uh, what was I saying? Well, I forget now. Sorry, but I think you get the idea. So that's what I do with scraps and that's it. And, and it just, oh, I was saying, gives me less stress. And I thought my craft room should be a happy place, right? I shouldn't be worried about stress and all those things. And so just don't worry about it now. So that's it. That's my scrap answer. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you can organize by color, by size. I mean, you can do, you can do whatever works for you. I think, I'll tell you why I think part of the reason is I don't have as many scraps and they're not as out of control anymore, is that I stopped doing in-person events, oh, gosh, I don't know what, I don't know, 10 years ago, I can't remember. I really don't do in-person events anymore. When I was doing those, like multiple events a week, that was a ton of cutting, right? I was constantly cutting cardstock, constantly ending up with scraps. And so I had tons. But now my crafting is for my blog and social media, for my videos, and for thank you cards, customer thank you cards. I make anywhere from like 40 to 70 a week for that. And then if I do a team event, I have some prep for that. But those are not like real regular. Those are kind of few and far between. So Mostly, I can kind of keep it all under control and I can say, okay, if you're cutting up this piece and you're going to end up with this kind of scrap, how can you use that strip? And I do my best to not even have scraps. So yeah, exactly. Holding the in-person classes, Michelle, is what really builds up your scraps. And so I just don't have as many anymore. Uh, but 
Mm, I don't even know where I was going with that. I hope it makes sense. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yep, you can put them in a folder. You can one sheet wonder. Yep, Katie, lots of great ideas here. Exactly, Louise. So I think that was part of my issue. She was saying that when you have scraps and then you need something, but you don't even have the right size scrap. Yeah, stressful, right? Exactly. Yep, I exactly, Audrey. Try to do, try to use them up as best as you can. Label maker, I'm getting there. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting there. Um, so any other questions about solving this issue with the larger products, the taller pocket storage, any of that before we just move on. I just want to make sure that we've covered all of that. Oh, and you know what I'm going to do? So today is Friday the 14th of October. Tomorrow the 15th of October on my blog, I'm going to have actual pictures of this and I will link again to all these products, but I'm also going to put on there a link to the video that I posted like a month or so ago of redoing this space because I covered some other things that you might find helpful. So I'll link that as well as some other um, helpful storage and organization links. Let's see, I'm just reading, sorry, that one went by too fast for me. Oh, great idea. In a freezer bag. That works well as well. Awesome. Oh, good. <laughs> Lori said she was in the middle of cleaning her craft room and she just found this video. Perfect timing. That's awesome. Awesome. So let me just show you my label maker. I've shown this several times before. It's by Brother and it's called a P-Touch. P-Touch is right there. And it's called the Cube. So you'll notice, of course, there's no keyboard here. And you might be thinking, how in the world does this work? So the cartridge is inside that has the tape. And you download the app on your phone from Brother. And you do all the typing on your phone, which I can't show you because my phone is here videoing this video, filming this video. But you open the app and you type in what you want it to say. You can have, as I have on all of my dye pocket labels, I have a little border on there. I just think it looks fun and fancy. You don't have to have a border. I do. Uh, so these, for instance, you know, don't have, have the border. They just have the text. But what I love about this app is I know on all of the Stampin' Storage tabs, no matter what pocket they have, it's a little more than two inches. And so you can set the length of the label and it will automatically, uh, I think, I think the word is kern, kern your text. It will automatically shrink or enlarge your text to fit if you click that option. So I do all of my labels at two inches and then it for the most part, it's about the same size text because it's approximately the same amount of words on here. And I like them big because, you know, old age eyeballs are, um, you know, hard of seeing a little bit. So I like it big. I like the large text. I like that on there. And it just prints them out. It comes right out of this slot. And then you just click this button to cut it. And then I label like everything in here is labeled. I, oh, I was going to show you. So they also have, they have lots of sizes. So you'll also find these large eight and a half by 11. They have those horizontal and vertical. They have 12 by 12 pockets with the tabs. And so I have all of my DSP right there. And you can see I have those tabs all labeled as well so that when it's in the slot and I'm looking down, I can read all of those. So I just love that everything now kind of matches. I, In the past, I did my best to just 
find like something at Staples and something at Target and something on Amazon and, and nothing matched. And it just, again, just gave me a stressful feeling. And I much prefer to have things a little more matchy matchy and a little more coordinated. So as time goes on, I'm just like, okay, you know, label everything, same labels. It's either white or clear. Um, oh, you can see, wait, it's so hard to point backwards. Okay, right there. That's where all my dies and my embossing folders are. And those, I've done videos on that before, but those dividers are from Stampin' Storage and they are that sort of pool party-ish blue color. So, you know, I take it back. Those are blue. They're not white, but you could get white. You can get, I think there's three different colors. But anyway, my point was, I'm just trying to make it all a little more cohesive. It helps me to just feel a little more calm and happy in here and not be stressed about anything. <laughs> Right. Um, oh my goodness. My sister-in-law Tammy is watching. Hello. I miss you. Hope you're doing well. The storage pockets, they're all just called storage pockets. And like I said, you do need to make sure that you're ordering the size and the orientation that you need. So whether it's the vertical or the horizontal, you know, portrait or landscape, of course, 12 by 12 is square, but some of them, the ones that I linked to on my blog today, there are more. You have to look under paper storage or die storage, and you'll find all these other sizes there. Yes, they are, Lori. They're super sturdy. I love them as well. <laughs> Trina says, can I come up there and wander around your stamp room? Okay, I'll tell you, it'll take you two seconds, because right here, what you see, this is my whole stamp room. It's eight feet square. It's very small. It's all within arm's reach. And would I love a huge craft room? Absolutely, I would. And I wouldn't be spilling out into other areas. But I don't have that option here. So it's all like I can spin my chair and I can reach it all. So it'll take you two seconds, Trina, but you know, you're welcome to come stand here and go, oh, okay, that's it. Let's see. Hang on. I'm just catching up on comments. Okay. Laura, here's a good point. She said she's heard that this brother label maker is not efficient in using the tape, that there's a lot of waste. So there's a couple of things you can do to mitigate that. Rather than saying, like like I told you, I make all of these two inches long so that, I mean, see, do you, can you see that? They're all the same size. That just makes me happy. You don't have to do that. You can just type your information, you know, like whatever the thing is called that you're making a label for, and you can keep typing. You can just keep typing and typing and typing, and it'll spit it out all in one long thing, and then you chop it into the pieces. So that's a very efficient way to use it. If you're doing it this way, and you're telling it, I want it two inches or three inches or an inch and a half, whatever, then it does waste some tape in between. So again, that was something that I struggled with. I thought, I don't want to waste this tape. And so then all my labels were different sizes. Made me crazy. So you have to make that decision, right? What works for you on that? I hope that helped answer that. Let's see. There was another question. Just hang on one second. I thought there was. Oh, good. Joanne said she's hopefully going to visit the Stampin' Storage location. That would be awesome. Um, Carol is asking about my blends container. We didn't talk about the blends today, the Stampin' Blends. I have two different systems. Currently, I have the Stampin' Up a blend holders right in front of me, and I have the Stampin' Storage one in my second little area over there. So I have both. They're both on my blog. I can link to those again. 
for you it tomorrow. I will do that. Um, Paula says, can you choose chain? Do you mean when you're printing out on this, if you just disable a particular length, then it just keeps spitting it out. Like you just type everything you want to type and it'll, when you push print, it'll just like do the whole thing. You don't have to click anything else. All right. Um, yeah, so you don't you don't have to choose anything particular. You just disable a particular length. I I hope I think that's answering your question. I hope the blends. No. Um. So you're. Uh oh, did we freeze again? Um. These right. Those. <laughs> Those are just the Stampin' Up! markers. That's what they come in. The Stampin' Write markers, they just come in that box. So those aren't the blends. The blends are bigger. They would not fit in that little space. If you're asking about the blending blending brush holder, you don't know how hard it is to point backwards and in like it's weird. Um, that's from Stampin' Storage as well. And I spray painted it with, it's not actually black. I think it's called Granite. I have that on my blog as well. Let me just say, if you are interested in more of all of these tips and whatnot and my storage ideas, on my blog, pattystamps.com, at the top, it says my craft room or Patty's craft room, one of the two. I have everything linked there. All of these things are linked there. So you can see all of the different posts, all of the links to purchase anything, what company it's from, etc. So... Uh, I hope that helps you as well. Um, let's see, there were a couple other, hang on. Oh, Stampin' Storage, yes, in Hutchin Hutchinson, Minnesota. Thank you for those of you who answered. I'm sorry I missed that one. Let's see. Oh, good question. Is there enough tape for one new annual catalog? So yes. On, let me grab one of these. Here's what the little thingy looks like. I get them at Sam's Club in a three pack. There is enough tape. In fact, does it say how long this thing is? It doesn't say how long it is, like how many feet. But yes, I can label like all the new DSP all my new dyes, the new in colors, the new products on a roll easily. Or a, do you call it a roll? A cartridge, I guess that's what it's called. Uh, and they come in different widths, uh, a third of an inch, a half of an inch. Um, they're different sizes. I, I just like the big one because I like as big a print as I can get. Um, let's see, what else? I thought there was another question. Oh, the brush holder, yes. The blending brush holder is from Stampin' Storage, and I have that linked on my blog under that tab that I was just telling you about. Oh, paper pumpkin kits in the storage envelopes. Well, yes, because paper pumpkin kits would normally come, right, with a card base and an envelope very similar to this. They uh, Very rarely would they come with bigger products than an actual card base. So you could definitely put your paper pumpkin like extras or you could put your stamp set and any extra little die cuts or just take the stuff out and put the stuff in here and label it and store it. You could totally do that. So that's a great question. And let's see what else. You are welcome. Oh yes, I love that label maker. This thing is so fabulous. Uh, I just, I love this thing. It made my life so much easier. So I use the half inch. I think they actually call it 0.47, but that's basically half an inch. But that's what all of this is. And I know you've seen this before. I've shown this so many times. I know you all love this with all of my embellishments. Those are all labeled as well in little pockets. Those little pockets are on... Uh, 
from Avery. Oh, I've got, I'll show you. And I, I know, it, sorry if I'm repeating this because you've all seen this before, I'm sure. But they're four by six vinyl envelopes. They say that they hold your passport and I use them for all of my embellishments. I love those things. Um, great. Now, if I missed a question, could you please repeat it now? Because I'm going to take a really good look over here at the comments. And that way I can help answer anything that you had. But, oh, and while you're, while you're maybe typing questions, I just have to show you. So if you were with me last week on my live, what did we do last week? Oh, did we do the... I think we did the six, the five by five memory books last week, the mini books, right? And I told you that my new plan going forward was that I had found my old technique books. All of these techniques we had done in classes years and years and years ago, some of them as many as like 20 years ago. And I said I was going to start going through these and I was going to start sharing techniques every week. And I got almost all the way ready and I didn't quite get ready enough. But I'll just show you, we are going to do, fingers crossed, next week, the 21st, our technique, our first technique in this series is going to be called Rock and Roll. And I am using this fabulous wreath set. So we're going to be doing the Rock and Roll technique with all different wreaths. I have lots of cards ready, but I didn't get everything ready for you. And I will be starting that technique series next week on the 21st. Hope you'll join me. I'm hoping that we'll do a series of 10. I think that'll kind of take us through the end of the year. I didn't look exactly, but I think it'll be close. And it'll just be fun to revisit some old techniques, which hopefully will be either new to you or maybe you like, oh yeah, 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 I remember that and haven't done that in 10 years and whatever. So I think it'll be fun. Yeah, it is an oldie but a goodie, isn't it? It is. Oh good, Christine says she uses her embellish or stores her embellishments in those pockets. Good, I'm glad you like the tips. Thank you. Oh, I know, Lori, those little four by six pockets, they are like the best. I absolutely love these. Love, oh, well, this is set, set aside for our project, but yeah, they hold, you know, almost every little embellishment that Stampin' Up! has. I think there's only one that's too big for this, and it's those stars or snowflakes or whatever those are, but let's see. Oh, Roxanne, yep, been stamping since 2003. Awesome! Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Anne. I think I've answered this before as well. It I cannot do it for the live, but you are welcome to watch my replays. As soon as we're done with this, the replay is up instantly, and the replay will be with closed captioning as well as the YouTube replay that will be on my blog this afternoon and tomorrow. You can watch that with closed captioning as well. Uh, yeah, oh, Lisa, you have a technique book as well. Yeah, they're fun, right? I'm just checking if there was any other questions. Yeah, Peggy, we are just ending, so feel free to watch the replay. Thank you for joining in. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, everybody. Oh, good. Patricia reorganized her embellishments as well. I just love having them out and labeled and, you know, like just... Reminds me of a card catalog in a library from, you know, we. I was just talking about libraries with a friend the other day, Marcy, and we were saying that how we just really miss libraries and bookstores. And I just remember that doing the card catalog and putting the cards back, volunteering in the libraries. I love that. I love card catalogs. So it reminds me of that, like thumbing through them and it's just kind of fun. Oh, good, Jane. Well, I hope that the techniques will be fun for you then as you watch. Oh, do you have your dye sleeves? Yes, Tandra, the, all of my dyes are in the Stampin' Storage sleeves as well and labeled. I think I showed these earlier and I have other videos all on these. So the magnet cards fit in the sleeves and you can buy different sizes. These are the six by seven. I just happen to like that size the best. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry. 
That wasn't your question. Do you save your dye sleeves after? Yes. I've done videos on this as well. I do save the Stampin' Up sleeves. They're like an envelope, right, with the flap. And I repurpose them. I've done videos on this of how I repurpose them. And I usually put Stampin' Up embellishments in them and package them up and give them as prize patrols or gifts or team promotion gifts or team prize patrols, whatever. But yes, that's what I repurpose them for. And they're wonderful. They're awesome. I mean, you can even put um, paper snips, bone folder, you know, you could make a cute little packet in those as well. So yes, I keep them and then I repurpose them. I'm sorry, I, I misread that question, Tandra. Sorry. How do you note coordinating products in your organizing and labeling? Well, I don't. I don't do that, Karen. I often refer to the catalog or the online store or like for instance, I keep this piece. So here's a pack of DSP. I keep that piece in the back so that when it lists the colors, I can just flip it over. I can see what the ordering code is. I can see the name, the proper name of it because sometimes I have to abbreviate. If it's a really long name, this might be abbreviated, but that would show me colors. But beyond that, I don't, I don't go any farther than that. Awesome. Yes, Peggy. Let's see. Um, so I don't, Katie is asking about um, keeping those dye envelopes for when you sell your dyes. So I do not sell my um, retired products necessarily. I do mystery boxes, which I'm getting ready to do in November. So I package up all my retired things into large flat rate, well, medium stamp, medium USPS flat rate boxes. And then with a qualifying Stampin' Up! order, I send out these mystery boxes. Now, I leave my dies on the magnet sheets when I put them in there. This is a personal choice. I know this doesn't work for everybody. The reason is, if I have to spend the time to take all of these dies off and repackage them back into the Stampin' Up! envelope, it's time and hours that I just don't have to do. It's better for me to just, I usually put this in a cello bag and I always have the label on the back so that it, everybody knows what it's originally called and what the order number and how many pieces and all that. And that's how I put them in my mystery boxes. I know that doesn't work for everybody because I know you're thinking like, wait, aren't you always buying magnet cards? Yeah. I buy them for every new catalog, but that is what works for me. Uh, time is precious and time is money. And for me, I would rather just buy two new packs of magnet cards than spending the time to take all of these off and repackage them. That's just me. So that's me. <laughs> if it doesn't work for you, feel free to repackage them. But but that's that's my system. Let's see. Hang on, I'm just reading comments. Do you label your dies to coordinate with stamp sets? I label my dies with whatever the name of the die is. Um, but that, you know what, that's a good idea. I might start writing or labeling on the back the name of the stamp set. That might be a good idea. However, did you see that Stampin' Up! is going to start naming the die the same as the stamp set? So in the future, I don't think we'll have to worry about that. But it, it is it can be confusing and a little frustrating when the die is like some totally different name than the stamp set. But yeah, I think going forward, I think we'll be okay with that. Yes, that Kathy is is saying that Evernote is a free app and you can uh, keep track of things on that. I'm not great with apps. I'm like a paper person and a list person. So yeah, again, whatever works for you. How 
how do you know which stamp set it goes with? Um, I have kind of a crazy good memory. <laughs> and if I get confused, I look in the catalog. Uh, but I just, I pretty much know. Because, um, you know, this is my full-time job. And I always joke that I live, eat, breathe, sleep, and dream stamping up. And it's very true. Um, you know, I even... I even get up in the night and write down things about Stampin' Up, so it's kind of my job. But that that would be perfectly great to double label like that. Yeah, Jess, exactly. It would be perfectly great to l put a note in here or on the back or whatever with the name of the stamp set. Some people like to put how many dies, so they'll do like dash 10 or whatever so that they know. Um, I... I could do that. I just don't. But that's also a great tip. Thanks, Kathy. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yep, a post-it note would work, Joanne. Exactly. Yes, exactly, Mary. Isn't that great that they're going to start naming them the same? I'm not sure if that's starting with the 2023 January catalog or if they're phasing it in. They may have already had things like labeled and printed I don't know exactly when that's starting, but I did hear them say that they are going to be doing that. So excited. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Hopefully I didn't miss any. Sometimes they start going by so fast. And I hope that you'll join me next week. I promise, well, I'll do my best to have all of our wreath cards ready and we'll look at the rock and roll technique and four seasons of wreath cards and all fun different things. So I think we're going to have fun with that. List the stamp set. I think they have that, Libby. Don't they list the stamp set and the dies together? I thought that they labeled that. Maybe you're maybe I'm not thinking of what you're thinking. Well, thank you again, everybody, for joining me. I hope that you didn't mind our little detour today with this video rather than a stamping video. It was fun to chat with you all. Hope you have a great weekend, and I will see you all next week. Bye.